Our next guest has had a front row seat to both the pain and opportunity in commercial real estate over the past year. And with a trillion dollars worth of loans maturing by the end of next year, he sees the motto as being survive until 2025. Joining me now is Ron Eliasaf. He's Northwind Group's founder and managing partner. Ron, it's good to check in with you. Are, are, are these busy days, quiet days? What's it like right now? Thank you, Kelly. Uh, end of year is usually more quiet, although we've seen a lot of loans uh, that needs to get done before year end. Uh, as you said, 24 is going to be a challenge for many borrowers on commercial real estate office, but not only there, but also in residential multifamily loans that are coming due that were done in prior years at very different metrics than what we're seeing in the market right now. We were talking to someone recently. I know you're in the New York City area, and, and they were kind of bearish on New York City um, uh, uh, real estate, uh, residential real estate because of some tax problems, rule changes, just difficulty in kind of incentivizing investment. Is that part of what's going on? That part is true. New York is challenging on a regulatory environment. We're actually, on the contrary, quite bullish on New York residential, hmm. mainly because of the significant lack of new supply. Because of these constraints, regulatory uh, post-COVID um, limitations, high financing costs, still very high cost of land and high costs of labor and material. There's just a, an immense shortage of new supply in New York. So we actually think residential is set to do quite well and will probably hold prices in 24. Not so much for commercial office properties, especially B-class, and not so much also for multifamily properties in other regions of the country where oversupply has been built in the last few years. And that was what our guest yesterday talked about, was that, you know, there's Florida condos, more in the luxury space where they're already seeing some supply guts, some pl some pricing pressure. We've even heard some caution from our uh, our REIT analyst about the Sunbelt real estate markets that he thinks were overbuilt. Definitely. We see that as well. We recognize that as well. And we're seeing uh, concessions rise, meaning landlords are giving more free rent to tenants to incentivize them uh, in order to keep um, the prices of, of the apartments. Uh, so definitely there's oversupply in certain sectors. Nashville is, is one city and we recognize oversupply being built, some parts of Atlanta, some parts of, of Florida as well. Uh, but I think the most important point to notice for 24 is where you had all these loans that were given three, four years ago at you know, 60, 70% loan to value where interest rates were Two, maybe 3% all in. Now they're going to be, need a refinance where cost of borrowing is double. Uh, and then the coverage won't, won't hold up, meaning it will be very hard for the banks that gave those loans to see their loans uh, fully paid off, which means more equity will need to be injected by borrowers, and some of them will just not be, not be able to do it. What about so you guys? So you see a high level of delinquencies and, and, and defaults. Where would you step up into the market and provide capital? We typically provide the senior tranche financing, typical standard bridge loans, up to three-year term uh, to bars um, that uh, meet our criteria. Uh, recently, uh, and surprisingly, it's been much higher caliber bars than we've seen, I would say, four or five years ago. Hmm. We're seeing private equity firms, family offices, even uh, pension funds, insurance company managers that simply need uh, uh, more time. They need a bridge until they can get uh, a new permanent financing in place. And that's what we're providing and other debt funds like us. Why aren't the banks providing it? And for what kinds of projects do they need this liquidity? Listen, the banks, in, in, even in 23, they've been on, on the sidelines ever, ever since Silicon Valley crash, you know, uh, Signature Bank, First Republic. We're seeing banks stop completely or limit in a significant way their exposure to real estate and lending in general, um, focusing on their own current books, um, solving issues in their current loans. So we've been filling the gap uh, that banks have left in 23, and that's going to be the trend for 24 as well.